never change Stay the wind and turn and cut my hair and shave Stop my way and the sun will never end Stay the wind and turn and cut my hair and shave Get it from the kingdom! Get it from the kingdom! There's a band you probably never heard of. That's a band, local band, Six Society. Well, so well, way, way, way ahead of their time. They're singing about politics, singing about politics and music in 1989. 1989. It's not that. It's not. I mean, it's not that that original to sing about politics and music, but uh, the, the way they did it was kind of original. So uh, Six Society. So let's talk about some top stories today. A little top stories, top stories. Guy gets spit in his face at the at a Trump rally. You heard the two minute barrier, the two hour marathon barrier has been shattered. Fires in L.A. What the hell is going on in L.A.? L.A. is burning. L.A. on fire, and um, Hong Kong fighting back. Hong Kong is uh, actually there's a, a a a growing number of people that want to get the hell out of there while the fighting is. Before the fighting ends, or while the fighting's going on, they want to they want to leave. People in in Hong Kong are fed up. And another story, uh, you've heard you heard uh, Sesame Street. <laughs> they have a new character, an opiate addicted mom, on Sesame Street. So we'll take a look at all that stuff. So, uh, so we'll start here. So Ulad Kipchang, Ulad Kipchang, right, Ken- Kenyan guy, becomes first person to run marathon in less than two hours. <laughs> They're like gazelles, man. You can't fucking beat these guys. Right? Two hours under the mar- for a marathon, running four out a- four minutes and thirty seconds a mile. How did he do it? Right? It's fucking crazy, man. It's not a world record because it was coached, because he was uh, the- he had um what do you call uh, he had guys um, pacing him along the way, and it was a very refined course somewhere in Vienna. So let's look. Uh, Iliad, Iliad Kipchong um, has has become the first athlete to run a marathon in less than two hours, although it could not count as a world record. As I said, the Olympic champion and world record holder from Kenya clocked one hour, 59 minutes, and 40 seconds Saturday at the INEOS 159 Challenge, an event set up for just that attempt to break two hours. Kip Jong was supported by 36 pacemakers, <laughs> not pacemakers in his heart, but guys that run side by side and hold the pace. So all he has to do is put his head down and run, which isn't easy, which doesn't make it, in my view, doesn't make it any easier, but he doesn't have to worry about pacing himself, which apparently takes up a lot of energy. Uh, so it doesn't count as a world record because it wasn't in a sanctioned race. It was in a challenge to, to make it happen. It's not like it was downhill, because you could do the... These guys, if you take a downhill run, you could probably break it in two hours easily, but this is a relatively flat course, and he had pacers. So Kip Young was uh, supported by 36 pacemakers who accompanied him in, an alt, in alternate, uh, alternating groups. One of the reasons the IAAF will not raf, ratify the time as a world record. Running at a consistent pace of 250 minutes per kilometer or 4 minutes and 33 seconds a mile. That is so fast. It's almost like a dead run. You know what I mean? If, you know, if you, the fastest you can run like a, a half a mile on a track, that's how fast these guys are going for two hours. It's crazy. So the pace mate, this is also very expected that eventually the one of these guys was going to break two hours. So it finally happened. So that's goddamn interesting. And now you'll see a whole slew of them uh, continue to break two hours. So the two-hour two two-hour marathon barrier has been shattered, has been shattered by the Kenyan Ilad Kipching. Let's go to, let's go to Hong Kong. Hong Kong. 40% of Hong Kongers want to flee city Amid, amid protests and imminent recession. Hmm. That's a high number. 40% of the people want to leave. Wow. So 7 million people, 40% want to get the hell out of there. 
And then once those 40%, those are probably the, the movers and the shakers, uh, you'll see an imminent, imminent recession. It's already going to happen, but the, the recession will plunge into depression if all those people get up and go. But China will, what they'll do is, what they'll, use, what they'll probably do, like what they did in Tibet, is they'll have these um, other people, like these, you know, fucking, you know, ex-farmers and uh, the Han people, come in and just fill up the, you know, fill up the apartments, fill up the jobs. Ah, oh, we could do, we do job, you do job, you leave, fuck you, we do your job. That's what'll happen. China will just fill the vacuum with, uh, with slaves. But nonetheless, so Hong Kong is failing. It's failing. It's falling. The people are losing hope that they can, you know. That they could have beat Hong Kong, uh, beat China, beat out China, held them off for another 50 years. It's not going to happen. So a mind-boggling 40% of Hong Kongers wanted to immigrate overseas because of the escalating social unrest that is expected to trigger an imminent recession in the coming quarters. Well, yeah, it is because they're blocking the, you know, they're blocking business. They're, you know, shutting down airports. So there's no tourism, you know, very little. Uh, the banking is is hurting. Everything's hurting. Good, but that's you know that's what you got to do. You either do that or you get ex you know extradited to China under communist law, and you chop your fucking head off. So a new study published by Hong Kong Institute of Asia Pacific Studies asked 707 individuals by phone in late September if they would leave the city because of the turmoil. More than 42 percent answered yes. Which is up thirty up from thirty four percent from last December. Of those who were asked, twenty three of respondents said they've already started emergency plans to leave. Some of those plans include getting out of housing leases, selling their homes and cars, and packing up their possessions ahead of a move to a foreign city. Now, what foreign city might they go? Definitely Taiwan. Definitely Japan. Um, you know, they're not going to move into mainland China because they want democracy. So maybe Australia, maybe Singapore. Singapore will probably be a, an interesting destination because these are not poor people. Hong Kong is, you know, has a relatively high uh, standard of living, high income per capita. So they moving is not out of the question. So China is just shitting all over Hong Kong. And the, um, the movers and shakers, the smart people are leaving. So the study was published on Thursday. What else? The, large, uh, the largest two fact, factors for respondents planning to move were too much political dis, dispute or social leverage uh, was 27% and no democracy in Hong Kong, 21%. So Hong Kong falling, failing, right? rather than fighting and winning, they're fighting and winning and then they're going to retreat and leave. Well, at least they want to leave. So it was predictable. It was expected. So this is disgusting. This story right here is disgusting. Never seen this before. Protester spits in face of Trump supporter during Vice interview. So here's a nice old gentleman, very um, well mannered man, wearing a Trump hat, uh, "Make America Great Again" hat outside of a Trump rally. A, a Trump hat a rally hat outside of a Trump rally and he's doing an interview with Vice and he gets spitting, it's, it's some asshole spits in his face. Crazy. You'll see it. I interviewed a lot of the president's supporters at rallies and have never seen this before. This is the reporter. My, my reaction gives it a, a quick look. Minnesota nice turned into Minnesota nasty quickly Thursday during a Vice News interview outside of President Trump's rally in Minnesota Minneapolis, Minnesota, as Dave Carlson, a salesman in Minnesota, calmly shared why he donates to Trump, Trump, President Trump's campaign, a protest the spat in the in the MAGA hat wearing Trump supporters' face, and kept walking by. So, are you ready for this? If you want to get triggered, here you go. Just brace yourself. 2016, something that the president was really proud of in his campaign was that it was self-funded and that he had a lot of small. Oh. Oh, nice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was self funded and that he had a lot of small. Oh, nice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 
Are you okay? That's right. I'm fine. Are you serious? I'm fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened. It's not how it really, that's not how people really feel. That's fucking disrespectful. But on the other hand, that shit is disrespectful as fuck too. So there's a difference. See, the proper response to this asshole right here is why don't you go fuck yourself, take your fucking hippie hair and your hippie face and get the fuck out of my face. That's what I would do. I would have kicked him in his balls. I respect your opinion. I didn't do that. Just spit in that his wasn't face. me. I was just trying to take the picture. <laughs> that's all right. You have a better attitude about that than well, I Well, I'm telling you, you know. Uh, <laughs> Does that surprise you? It makes my blood boil. I don't know about you, but that, that pisses me off. Right? It doesn't make you a Trump supporter or a anybody supporter. Some, you're giving an interview and somebody spits in your face? Oh, that did surprise me a little bit. That shit is crazy, man. That should, that should irritate anybody, right? That's the liberal left. That's, that's the, the Antifa motherfucker, whoever he is. Spits in, a, in an old man, an older guy's face, old gentleman's face, smiling at a at a political rally, unacceptable, un fucking acceptable. Sesame Street, this is crazy. I don't know. I don't know what you think of it. I have kind of an opinion of it. I think it's um, Sesame Street introduces a Muppet who has a mother addicted to opiates. Hmm. I don't know. I I like the idea. I think it's educational. Um. I think it's very, very human and very real. Uh, I think that, um, yeah, I, I give it, I, let's read more. I think it's a good idea. So Sesame Street, one of the longest running children's television shows in the United States, has introduced a new character that has a mother who was addicted to opiates. Wow, that's crazy, man. Crazy times we're living in, right? This is what you have to teach kids. I, that's a great picture, too. You know, it's Ernie. Is it Ernie? It's Elmo. I'm sorry. Elmo hugging the mother, right? Oh, no, that's the girl. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the child of the mother. Let me just read. <laughs> the new character is a bright green Muppet with yellow hair who is friends with Elmo. Carly will reportedly talk about how addiction has affected her and her family in new editions of the show's online community resource initiatives. It's interesting, man. I'll tell you. The show's creator says that they, want, they wanted to cover this topic on, how, on the show because there are millions of children who are currently facing this reality. And there are, there are no resources out there for these kids. Now, that's a damn shame. That's a, that's a startling reality that millions and millions of moms in America strung out on pharmaceuticals. But no, you don't want to fix the, the medical industrial complex by giving you know universal single payer health care to all and eliminating the insurance companies that are making bill, you know millions and billions of dollars on this stuff and and uh, and compete for pharmaceutical prices on a one a one on one basis the single payer basis single payer being the United States government you don't want to institute any of these things you want to keep it just the way it is just the way it is so you have millions of moms strung out on opioids Congratulations, America, on your choice. Congratulations. It's not, it's so, you don't want uh, socialism, right? Oh, it's fucking socialism. It's going to become, America is going to become Venezuela if you address the opioid problem and the medical problem in this country. And I digress. In an interview with Stat News, Dr. Jeanette Badababa, Senior Vice President of U.S. Social Impact at Sesame Work, estimated that there is 5.7 million children under the age of 11 who live in a house with a parent who struggles with addiction. Fucking crazy. Uh, this is sick. This is sick. I'm just going to leave it there because it's a, great, it's a great image. Elmo is offering his support. You know, Elmo, the, I think he, this is the guy, Ernie lives in the garbage pail. I, I don't know these characters. Elmo is, uh, Elmo's the cookie eater, right? He eats the cookies, I think. Um, anyway, but it's a, it's, a, it's a great imagery, image. So what's going on in L.A.? Ah, fire. Fucking L.A. on fire, man. God damn. Let's check it out. Wildfire exploded overnight, burning dozens of homes and prompting mandatory evacuations. 
High winds driving the flames are expected to last for hours. The fire started last night in Silmar, northwest of downtown Los Angeles, fueled by dry conditions and wind gusts up to 70 miles an hour. It's now burned more than 4,000 acres. It's one of eight active wildfires burning in California, days after power was shut off to hundreds of thousands of people in an effort to prevent fires. Errol Barnett is in Porter Ranch. Errol, what's the situation there right now? Now this wildfire really exploded in power in just the last few minutes. You can also see the winds and how they fuel the fire's strength. But there's another component as well. And those eight wildfires burning and 70 mile an hour winds, it's the wind that causes it to, I guess, to uh, accelerate. Right, you you know you blow on on fire and it just it just uh, it becomes an inferno, right? So it's the the intense wind is causing it the dryness and the intense wind, I guess. These are the embers. The fire is. I mean, the, the theory was that a lot of this was set up, a lot of this was deliberate fire, as it is in the, um, you know, in parts of the uh, the the Amazon where they're actually burning down the forest to make room for other stuff. Uh, is that what's going on in L.A.? Are these deliberately set fires? Burying these embers, allowing this wildfire to jump across the street, those embers landing on these homes. And that's why firefighters are taking defensive positions to try... Well, let's not just say that the fires are fake. The fires are real. It's real freaking fire. Protect this property, but there's only not so friendly much fire. they can do. Wildfire flames jumping two major freeways, destroying homes and burning vehicles, giving people living nearby little time to pack up and leave. You have to keep in mind as you watch this that we are witnessing one person or one family's absolute worst nightmare, their home up in flames in a matter of hours. I don't feel like leaving my house and, and not knowing what's going to happen. Workers at a wildlife center say horses that got loose were corralled and brought safely inside. Spot fires are widespread, covering hundreds of acres. To the southeast, the Via Calamesa Mobile Home Park burned into the night. The fire began when a trash truck dumped burning garbage into dry grass. Firefighters working to contain the flames more than six hours after they began. As erratic winds blew embers into more and more structures, 74 were destroyed. Some people shoveled dirt onto hot spots and pulled out their own hoses to try and stop the fire from spreading. I'm just glad that we made it out. People escaping the flames say the fire spread so quickly, many had to leave their pets behind. I just ran into my neighbor right here and she's holding her dog and she's missing too. Earlier Thursday, a fire in Fontana, east of Los Angeles, damaged two homes. It's unclear what You stop and you go in and you get your pets. You don't fucking leave your dog in the fire. God damn it. The power was cut in this area. More than 800,000 California customers had their electricity turned off over the past three days to reduce the fire risk. California's governor blasting the state's utilities for not modernizing their grids. It's decisions that were not made. So what else? Fox is covering it too. It comes despite extraordinary measures by power companies to minimize the risk there. National correspondent William Lajeunesse is live tonight in Porter Ranch neighborhood of Los Angeles. Good evening, William. I was coming over that ridge. I said, we got to go. Everything's on fire up there. Everything. The houses, everything's on fire. Really? It's bad. A fire exploding overnight north of Los Angeles as Santa Ana winds rip through the San Fernando Valley, gusting to more than 50 miles an hour. Pretty shortly before sunrise at Porter Ranch, this fire is 0% contained and burning out of control. No one really knows with these winds, so we're just hoping for the best. 100,000 evacuated here and two fatalities. One, a man in his 50s, suffered a heart attack trying to protect his home. Another died in this fire east of Los Angeles that destroyed a mobile home park. This event's going to take a few days. With strong sustained winds and humidity under 10 percent, firefighters are on defense, protecting homes and dropping retardant, hoping to slow a fire chewing some 800 acres an hour. It's a rough estimate right now, but we're uh, looking at a number of at least 25 homes have been damaged. Several hundred thousand Californians, mostly in the northern part of the state, remain without electricity as power. 
See, I think there's one more. We'll see how. Uh, California, multiple blazes. ABC reported. Breaking out across the state, fast moving fires shutting down major highways and destroying homes. You're looking live at the KAB. That's a sick image right there, right? Look at that fire ready to. Ready to come up on a knock on your door and burn your freaking place down. You see Chopper flying over Los Angeles County right now. And Matt Gutman, he is on the ground in Porter Ranch, California, bringing us Ooh. the story. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Michael. This is an incredibly dangerous situation. Once you see this fire down below, it's engulfed this entire valley. We've been here for about 25 minutes or so, and we've seen hundreds of acres consumed in this entire area. Now, down there, that's the San Fernando Valley. Millions of people live there. The wind blowing at 30 miles an hour. Watch those embers being whipped around. And all around us, there are fires right in those hillsides being completely engulfed by this wind and the embers that are going up. And just minutes ago, we saw police officers going door to door, telling people to get out and get out now. The scene this morning. So I don't know what to make of that, man. That's some serious fire burning, man. Some really, really fucking crazy shit, right? Fucking L.A. on fire, man. So the guy got gets spit in his face. That's a bad thing, man. Got two-hour marathon. That was some, very impressive, man. Very impressive that the Kenyan broke the two-hour marathon. And um, it looks like Hong Kong is going to fall. It looks like Hong Kong is going to evacuate and uh, Elmo, Elmo has a new friend, a, a uh, an opiate addicted mo uh, mom, an ad an opiate addicted child with a mom. <laughs> I'm sorry, opiate addicted mom's child. Uh, it's crazy, man. Crazy time. So it's a sick society, man. That was what I was trying to say with the music, man. <laughs>